But can you see how it's a thread? Well, I thought it was very much a thread between creation care and compassion. This whole thing that, you know, God's heart is restorative. God's heart is to restore relationships. God's heart is to restore the destruction, um, turn it around that we wreak on each other, that we wreak on our planet. And his heart is to turn it around through Jesus. Through Jesus, he then instills in us a new way, a new way of living, a new way of being. Um, and it is this restorative, this righteous, um, you know, to, um, yeah, just turn things around. And I, yeah, so I hope that helps you. As we talk about compassion, and funny enough, I picked this picture of compassion because it's this idea of this interconnection, that actually God's heart is not that, uh, in regards to compassion, is an internal work that has an external far reach that is actually meant to transform the way we live and to transform our earth in the example of Jesus, obviously, even as that little video clip um, demonstrated. Um, I, I guess I want to draw our attention to this well-known passage of scripture in Exodus 34, verse 6. Probably the most famous when it comes to this idea of God being compassionate. This is how God introduces himself to Moses. He says, I'm the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And God introduces himself first and foremost as the compassionate one, the compassionate one. And the compassionate one just talks about this deep, maternal, paternal, love this deep gut kind of love and compassion a love and a care that is not passive but is active that is deeply moved to respond it's talking about this i think the, the hebrew origin of that word talks about your gut and your bowels it's like this gut wrenching movement <laughs> That, that actually it's deep within, it's undeniable, it's motivating um, to action and it's motivating and motivates God to respond. It's the core to who he is. He can't just stand by and ignore, but he is so deeply moved by who we are and by his love for us and by our plight that he is an active, a faithfully active, of God towards us, like a mother is towards their child, is another description of this compassionate nature of God. Um, and I think it's powerful and beautiful. Um, in our lecture um, on Moodle, um, the lecturer mentioned that compassion is the, this combination of this prefix com, which means together, passion, which is emotive, your emotions, and suffering. Um, and I thought that's really interesting. When we consider um, the, the, what God talks about when he says he is moved by us, by our plight, and the, the fact that we are invited to be like Christ, to be like God in the way that we respond to and interact with, the, the others, with others in our world. It's that shared suffering, that that shared empathy. We would use that word a lot. We understand empathy. It's that, that resonance. Um, that, um, and we don't deny that resonance. We don't deny that pain, but we allow that to motivate us and move us towards action. And in that video, I, I loved um, that, you know, the action was more than just, it was to turn the tide on histories and centuries worth of injustice that that this kind of compassion is to turn the tide and to move things back towards wholeness um that kind of action together that that we and you know god's really been challenging me about this idea of suffering this idea of um feeling other people's pain um because i think naturally I have developed many ways of numbing it, many ways of avoiding it, many ways of not having to allow it to be 
um, too strong in me, but um, I, I don't actually believe that God advocates for that. Um, and we're going to look at that a little bit further, about actually allowing these things to move us to action, um, rather than trying to dull them and silence them and band-aid them. I think what God would allow, want us and encourage us to do as people of compassion allow ourselves to be open to that pain and suffering and not just end up in between and like floundering, but allow the spirit of God then to empower us and direct us to then cause us to action where we can actually do something about because that's what I believe God's spirit wants to do, wants to bring solution. And obviously in Jesus, we have the perfect example. You know, Jesus is God's compassion to become visible to us. The word became flesh. We could see in his behavior and his action what compassion looks like and who he was. He was the living and breathing example of what that looks like. Um, in the scriptures, we read that he was moved by compassion again and again. Um, again, a lesson to me that he didn't dull it, but he allowed the compassion to move him to respond by the spirit of God and bring freedom, bring the kingdom, bring solution, bring God's life. Um, and he is our example. Just in closing, now you probably, yep, you probably, yeah, the text isn't that great. But um, I'm just going to close on Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 11. Again, this is something that God has been challenging me about um, when it comes to um, this whole idea of compassion, when you look at the Beatitudes, when you look at these blessings, um, what you actually, what I've discovered is you actually get a really amazing picture of Jesus. Um, and when we're talking about compassion, I believe that each one of these aspects gives us a window into what this gut feeling this heart-motivated, responsive love looks like. So number one, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, it says. But blessed are the poor in spirit. What does poor in spirit mean? It, well, when you consider Jesus being poor in spirit, you know, when he was the most spiritually found and articulate and connected to God, was he wasn't inflated in his own mind. You know, he was open to the fact that humanity needs that connection with God, that there is this ache and there is this longing and there is this gap and there is this need, this poverty without God, this awareness. Um, and so compassion, I guess, keeps us in that space where we are not independent of God, where we're not so full and so proud and so full of our own, our own selves that we don't have room for God. And it's so maintaining that space of openness, maintaining that space of humility. If we are to be people of compassion, then we can never have a right, right? Because we'll be closed off to the presence of God. Blessed are those who mourn. Again, really unusual unusual passage of scripture but when we're thinking about that in terms of the human race in terms of God's heart blessed are those who mourn the condition of the human heart the condition of our sin filled world we've just talked about creation care the havoc that sin has wreaked upon humanity the havoc that we as human beings wreak upon each other Blessed are those who mourn. And again, God's been challenging me on that, Sharon. How often have you numbed that? Do you still mourn for the state of humanity? Do you still mourn for the injustices that we wreak on each other? Do you still mourn? Are you still open to that? Because he says, blessed are those who mourn. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. They will enter into 
Christ's solution. The only way to be comforted if you're mourning for something is to see that, that pain and that, that issue resolve. And again, if we're to enter into God's compassion, we have to be open to seeing. We have to be open to his heart, to what he sees, to what he weeps over, to what he aches for. And the promise for those who join him in that openness of sight, not in denial, is that we will see his solution. We will see his comfort. We will see his restoration, which I think is powerful. Blessed are the meek. Again, those who are not all about themselves, but who are open and humble. And, you know, life, again, we've seen that in the video. It's not all about me and my agenda and what I get to do. But if we are to participate in being like Christ in his heart of compassion, then it's letting go of self and allowing ourselves to become humble and open and available. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. God's inviting us into that place of, hey, will you do that? Will you serve? Will you lay down your life for others? If you do that, you will see the reward of I believe God's heart, which is all creation, his creation coming back into restored communion with him because they will inherit the earth. Um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who long for it, who but have hunger pains. Again, we're talking about this gut space where you were so moved with a desire. And I love how that video talks about that word righteousness who desire humanity to be restored in right relations, this ethnic fighting and this discrimination and this, we're all sick of it, but we've got to allow that to become hunger and a, and a yearning um, for us to be, again, motivated by this compassion, moved to action. God wants us not to deny these things, but to be open to them. And as like we keep going down the list, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. They're not necessarily comfortable positions to be in. But as you unpack each one of those, you see it's this being responsive to those gut-wrenching motivations and allowing us to be moved with compassion. Um, and I've been challenged by that. And so I want to leave... Um, you all with that challenge as we close on the idea of compassion, that we would maybe be open, not maybe, but maybe be open um, and maybe consider, well, have I been numbing out those gut responses because they're too difficult to navigate, they're too painful? Um, I actually believe when it comes to compassion, which is what God is teaching me, is that I've got to allow myself to be awake to these things again so that through God I can become dependent on his spirit bringing solution because he wants his kingdom to come through us. But if we're shutting down the, the indicators, if we're shutting down the, the, our awareness of the need, if we're shutting because of the difficulty, because of the pain, and I believe what we're doing is we're closing an opportunity, the door of opportunity for God's spirit to bring solution. And he wants to bring solution through us that we would be bringers of his life, of his compassion, of his devotion and his heart towards humanity, towards us and towards our creation. So I would love to close out the session in prayer if that's okay. And then I'll pass you on to Pastor Peter. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your presence. And Lord, even as we've come around your word, we, we take a posture of awe and respect again for who you are and who we are in the midst of all of your creation. Lord, that you would consider us, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would even use us, um, Lord God, to advocate your kingdom, your restoration, your righteousness and your life on the earth. And I pray for every person tonight here that you would anoint us afresh that you would grace us afresh lord to image you to be part of your restoration plan for all of humanity and all of creation so i bless every person here tonight afresh in 
Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Sharon. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> just like to take this off. Okay, we're going to disappear off Zoom for about two minutes while we get ready for Pete's class, and then we'll be back. So we'll be back in a minute. See you guys. <laughs>